Hey everybody, Diggs here. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to be talking about something that I've been thinking about for a long time now, pretty much ever since EX came out. It's shown up in a couple of my other videos, and it's a conversation about the modification of base stats for 120 units and just kind of a shift in the game from where we were before to where we're at now specifically uh, what i want to focus on is hp values because i believe that the change in hp values has actually changed the prioritization of stats in the game and i think that hp is quite likely the most important stat in the game right now <laughs> Now, a lot of people probably are like, well, Diggs, that's really obvious, right? Well, I'm not quite sure about that, right? We, we are in a situation where we gained so much HP for our units in such a short amount of time that I think with all of the EX changes, we really didn't take a moment to stop and observe that. We all know how powerful Solidus is, right? Giving light element units 25% HP is extremely powerful. How powerful and why is HP powerful now is never really a question that we dove into. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to be showcasing a Rob because I love to build my Rob and unlike most Robs out there, I actually build my Rob pretty tanky. And so I do focus on HP and more defensive characteristics and he's one of the units who I really think is a great showcase for how powerful HP is because he is one of the, or was one of the lowest total HP, base HP units for UR units uh, pre 120 EX. So what was his HP and what is it at now? Well, the most comparable unit right now for his HP when he was level 99 is Oldoa. And you can pull up the stats here in stat details. They did actually change the stat detail page, which is really nice. Uh, more recently, uh, you can see that the base HP for Oldoa is about 1600. That's about what Rob's was. And with the changes to the game, that's going to be the additions of Elemental Mastery. That's also going to be the additions and changes to guild statues. You can see that I have an additional 547 HP on top of that, which we previously didn't really have right we had guild statue hp but we didn't really have mastery level e uh, hp uh in this so that is one factor to keep in mind right this was maybe about 200 previously maybe about 150 so already off the bat we're getting an addition of like 350 hp for one of the lower ur units in terms of base hp in the game Rob, now that he has his 120, actually saw a significant HP increase. And this is one of the biggest factors in driving the relevance and the importance of HP plus percentage. You can see that his base HP actually increased to 2600. And that is quite impressive, right? Uh, Having a max HP of 2600 or a base HP of 2600 means that this HP is going to be modified by all HP percentage modifying stats. So, for example, if you have HP plus 25%, if you have a mastery ability that gives HP plus 10%, all of a sudden it's going to be adding plus 260 HP instead of plus 160 that it previously would have added. That is huge, right? If you consider the amount of modifications that we can get on light elemental units for plus HP, it's quite significant. And it really goes to show how even the lowest, right? Uh, one of the lowest max or base HP units in the game at level 99 can suddenly have this relevant survivability. And I think it also does something to the game when you're boosting HP values this significantly. And I actually really enjoy the amount that it feels like some of the battles are being drawn out because of this, because it no longer enables you to one shot characters if you're building them right. A great example of this would be Yuna's survivability. I think a lot of players are able to survive with Yuna because they're utilizing light HP plus, they're utilizing you know, other VCs such as Solidus, 
it's very important that you're utilizing the right VCs with the right units in order to give enough, enough HP for a unit to be survivable. That's why it's never impressive to me when I see a unit one-shotting Yuna, for example, because there are so many Yunas out there that are not built for survivability that I think kind of the idea of increasing your HP as a method for survival in War of the Visions is not thought of, right? It's kind of this new world. And I think it's going to be very predominant, particularly with a lot of the global exclusive changes that we see to VC cards that are adding like plus HP for a unit, for example. And these changes have been like trickled in over the last couple of months. And I think they're only gonna become more relevant now. Let's talk about some of the other things that are changing because that's not the only change that is making, you know, these HP builds or these kind of buffier units survive more. Uh, let's talk about Not Naked Rob because we're gonna compare him here in a second. But Rob, just kind of like in a rainbow, rainbow formation, right? He's not getting passive masteries. He's kind of having a two-star Esper on. He's only gonna have about 4,500 HP. Now, if we go to a light composition, there's a couple things that have changed here, right? And of course, you're gonna be getting the plus percentage HP bonus from uh, these two units. You're gonna be getting the HP bonus from Solidus. But the other big factor here, which a lot of people don't see, is the fact that Behemoth is actually on Rob. And I actually believe that Behemoth is probably uh, the strongest Esper right now in terms of melee and capability because of the raw stats that Behemoth brings to the table. I'll just pull Behemoth up. Behemoth is basically one of the only espers that breaks 1100 HP. Um, of course, you have Bahamut and you have Ifrit 3 star, Ifrit not being too relevant for Rob, unfortunately. But Behemoth is extremely relevant because you can both build light resistance on him, you can build slash attack, you can mod into like critical damage if you want, if you're like me running Rob. There's so many things that you can spec into. You also have the insane attack. You have the insane HP, right? And Behemoth has 1100 HP. Previously, the only really comparable Esper for HP would have been like Odin, right? With 823, but even then Odin's pretty low, right? Like if you're looking at Espers to compare, uh, really like if you sort them by HP here, which you actually can do, uh, you can see that no Esper breaks 1,000 HP, let alone 1,100, until the three-star Espers start showing up. You have Golem and Demon Wall, which are about 974, which for King Rob, like, the trade-off there is just not good, right? Of course, you can get Man-Eater and Defense on Golem, but it doesn't really suit his kit very much uh, like Behemoth does. So you can see that, like, you know, if you were traditionally going to be getting about 850 HP, you're getting an additional 300 HP. In the case of Ifrit with 1300 HP or Bahamut with 1200 HP, you're getting anywhere between like 400 to 500 more HP than previous. And it just goes to show kind of how fast the game is changing. Now, what is Rob's HP at now? It's at 5700. This is one of the lowest base HP units for the UR units in the game. And he is sitting at 5,700 in a built composition here. Now, one thing that's a little bit different here, which I haven't, which I have changed, uh, you'll probably notice Demon Wall VC is on here because I wanted to get the HP value of Rob with Skintillion when it does come out later this week. Because if you actually look at some of the VCs for light elemental VCs, the HP value is really low on them. If you look at Scions of Shadow, it's plus 153. Uh, and that's really the only like offensive light elemental VC that you're gonna be setting. So when I was looking for like offensive light elemental VCs, uh, I was like, man, well, we, we, we know the Rob cards coming out here in the near future. Uh, you can even see Iron Giant. I mean, honestly, Iron Giant is a pretty good VC to set. If I wasn't running, uh, if I wasn't running um, Solidus, I would probably consider actually running Iron Giant. Uh, but because I already have the slash attack resistance up, um, it's still pretty good. But again, I mean, this just goes to show how critical HP Plus is, right? You have a 5700 HP Rob. 
you have a 5700 HP unit. They have almost double, essentially, their base HP, right? So their basic HP is 2400. Yeah, they have over 100% base HP. So it's interesting to me how the game is shifting. And I think it's shifting in a direction where this is going to be a factor you have to keep in mind. When I was trying to put together my O team, I really struggled to put together the team because I wanted to utilize HP plus VCs and I could not make it work. Uh, let me show you why. I'll go ahead and pull up. I think I have his composition here. I was just running it the other day. Here it is. So this is the one that I took into the tournament that Oran J actually ran uh, just the other day. And granted, this tournament was MR only, but the problem that I ran into, right, is that all of a sudden the party ability for Swordsman Refinement for O gives Slash Attack Party up, when really what I wanted to run originally was like a lightning formation with Sid utilizing Igion. But Igion, it does have the lightning unit max HP up, but it also gives party wide slash attack up. So it feels like to me, I couldn't run both of those VCs at the same time. And it felt to me that lightning was like an incomplete uh, element, if that makes sense. Because lightning is lacking the key components that say light compositions have. It's lacking lightning mastery abilities, right? You have access to a limb. That's it. We are going to get 9S here in the near future, and we're also going to get 9S's spear. So maybe there's going to be a composition where you're running like 9S, a limb, and O, but we're still missing that powerful you are lightning unit, that powerful you are lightning mastery. And this is not just for lightning. This is for a variety of elements, right? So I love that HP up is a really awesome factor and it's modifying the gameplay for a variety of elements. But I'm also frustrated that every element can't be built in a way that is either complementary to that or that is, you know, just as powerful right now. And as far as I know, looking into the future, there may or may not be compositions and elements that are kind of undersided or don't have the capability of modifying their units to that extent. And it concerns me a little bit. For those of you who have seen my O, of course I found a way to make him viable with a critical hit build and using some different VCs to kind of bring out attack value uh, more than say HP and survivability. But all of a sudden it shifts to a glass cannon, which is kind of the old meta, right? Where like you kill your opponent before they can kill you. And it's, it's, it's not as fun. I feel like I really want like to be able to build up and build my units with that HP. Uh, anyway, everybody, I uh, hope you had a good time watching and listening to this video. Uh, I been thinking about this a lot and I really wanted to get it out there. Uh, so I'm glad I was finally able to get it out there. Uh, if you want to support me, make sure you use my affiliate link dig.gs coins. And as always, everybody have a great rest of your day.